Hello, this is Mark from DSLR Pros, and this tutorial will take a look at DJI's thermal analysis tool. This is the software that you'll use to view and edit your thermal photos from your Matrice 300. First, if you have a Matrice 210 with an XT or an XT2, you should be using FLIR tools. If you have a Matrice 300 with an H20T or the XTS, you should be using a DJI thermal analysis tool. Here's how you can download the DJI thermal analysis tool. Go to dji.com, navigate to the H20 series page, then from there, click the downloads icon, then download the exe file at the bottom. Keep in mind, this is only working with Windows 7 or above currently. So that means there's no, uh, no Apple version. Once you download it, here's what you'll see. If it's your first time, open up the settings up here and then change your units of measurement. So we'll go ahead and you know select Fahrenheit. Then when you're ready, you can Upload your thermal photos by clicking add. Now you have the option to add a photo or a folder. So we have our thermal image ready to go. And we can see it show up here and here it is. So one important thing to note is whenever you're importing the radiometric thermal photos, you'll always just be looking at the raw white hot image. Uh, the great thing about radiometric data is that it's highly editable. So whatever changes you make in the camera while shooting it, you will be able to edit those later when you bring it into the thermal analysis tool. The exceptions there would be things like focus, range, or distance. Those will be burned in, but other things like palette, emissivity, span, you have the ability to edit all of those once you bring it into the analysis tool. So that's a great thing about thermal photos. So the first thing we'll do is quickly tune our image. So we'll start by applying a palette. Now we're looking at white hot, which is the most commonly used palette. Here is fulgurite. In fulgurite, dark red represents low temperatures and white represents high temperatures. The nice thing about this palette is that the warm tone of the palette aligns with people's association of hot and cold. So it's a very intuitive palette to read. Next up, we have iron red, which was similar to iron bow. This palette displays nuanced differences in heat signatures uh, and is very popular for industrial applications. So we'll stick with this palette. The next thing we can do is tune our image and adjust how the color contrast is being displayed on the temperature data. This can help us really draw the viewer's attention to the part of the issue that we're trying to report on. So I'll show exactly what that means. So you're able to make adjustments to the way that the image is displayed and how it appears. So if we're trying to report on this one panel, which appears to be hotter than its neighboring panels, we can adjust the tune to help, uh, to help do that. So you can see here, some of, that, some of that, that difference is lost within the image, but as I get rid of some of these cooler values at the bottom, I'm moving more thermal contrast to the temperature range that we want to report on, and it's helping improve the image. So uh, once you're happy with your palette, you can go ahead and lock that down. So again, here's what we were originally looking at. We've made our adjustment. Here's what we're looking at now. So we have two main tools to read temperatures with. The first one is our spot meter. That's this right here. This will tell us the temperature reading of any pixel in the scene. And then we also have our area meter. And this will show us the hottest or coldest pixel within the box that we drop down. So here we're looking at, again, these two panels side by side. We can see almost a 30 degree delta between this panel and its neighboring panel. And then in this area measurement, we're seeing hottest over here, coldest down here. Another important thing we can do is adjust our external parameter settings. Uh, so the important one there to keep in mind on is uh, emissivity. So if you wanna report highly accurate temperature readings, you may need to adjust the emissivity value based on the subject that you're looking at. Certain subjects will have a higher emissivity value and then they will give you less accurate readings. So really quickly, emissivity is how strongly the surface is emitting energy as thermal radiation. If you're not sure the emissivity value of your subject, you can refer to the emissivity of common materials table, which you can find online or in your product manual. If the subject you're looking at is not on the common emissivity table, it can be a more complex process that's typically covered in professional thermography training. If this is something you're interested in, contact uh, support at DSLR Pros and we can discuss that a little bit with you. Lastly, you have the ability to reset your image and go back to that raw image that you imported. You can save the image here. Keep in mind, this is only gonna save the radiometric image that you're looking at inside the thermal analysis tool. If you wanna export this image for reporting, use the screenshot function over here. 
Then lastly, we have our image information over there on the right. This helps us see the make and model of the camera that we are using and is good if we want to later report on that. Okay, guys, thank you all for joining us for this video. I appreciate it. Again, my name is Mark Flam. I'm the Enterprise Sales and Support Manager at DSLR Pros. If you're curious to learn more, check out our Matrice 200 versus 300 comparison video, which is also on our YouTube channel. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to sales at DSLR Pros. Okay, thanks a lot and have a great day.